have Paul McCrogan asks, how does the body decide which energy to use, glucose oh. or fat? Take what I try to do is answer questions like this in a way that simplifies them to the point where people can basically get an, a, 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 an yes. overall idea and not worry about which, which molecule combines with what molecule and draw big on charts of pathways and all that because that's going to go over people's heads. It's, 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 it's a concept that you have to grasp. And I use hybrid cars as an example. And that makes it in something that most people can understand, a hybrid car. We are a hybrid animal. We can run on two different fuels. Some generators that you buy, you know, home generators, are, are they call them flex. They can run on natural gas, propane gas, gasoline, you know, and they're designed to adapt. And when you tell it which fuel it's running on, it makes a few little changes to its, probably its programming of spark timing and everything else. And it, and it runs efficiently on that fuel that you've selected. Well, because in the history of our evolution, there were great periods of, of famine. There were times when people couldn't. And there were alternative fuel sources around. We, of course, in an effort to not die, we started eating some of these things. And we had adapted pretty well to animals as we migrated. But we migrated to places and geological changes happened. And then the animals, uh, maybe the desert became a forest and maybe the, the, the animals we were hunting went extinct or they went somewhere else. And we found ourselves having to eat plants to get our energy. And, and the humans that had the ability to actually metabolize that energy survived. And the humans that didn't, they, their, their branch of the family tree went extinct. So over the course of all this migration and all of this feast or famine, we ended up with a pretty well-developed set of biology to allow us to run either on meat and fat, which was our primary preferred fuel, or carbohydrates and sugars, which was our survival food. And we still have that today because over the course of time, genetic changes, changes to the genes, changes to all of that stuff don't happen very often. Changes to epigenetics, and I'm not going to get into that, happen all the time, but changes to the basic genetics, the 25,000 protein coding genes that we have are still pretty much the same as they were back in the pre-caveman days, back dating hundreds of thousands or maybe millions of years ago. So here we are. We can run on sugars and we can run on fat. It's all decided. It's all decided at a cellular level. And this is the point you have to understand. There is not decided in our brain. Each cell in your body, and there are trillions of them, is an autonomous living thing. An island unto itself. Exercising all of the same functions of life that a single cell organism does. It creates its own energy that's used only in that cell. In that cell. Imagine you live in a condominium or an apartment building that has a trillion apartments and nobody ever leaves their apartment. Everything they need is delivered to them through a network of hallways. That's your bloodstream. Every instruction of whatever they need to do is delivered to them by what we call hormones or electrical signals along our nervous system. But the actual work of living day to day never leaves the apartment. And if the messages don't come, the people in the apartment don't know what the hell to do. If the food deliveries don't come, the people in the apartment die. But each cell 
regulates its own metabolism because it's creating energy just for itself. So here you have a trillion apartments. These people don't even know who their neighbors are. They've never seen their neighbors. They've never gone out into the hallway. They, as far as they know, they're the whole world. And stuff just comes to the door. The door are receptors on the cell walls that allow things in. They allow and, and give signaling. But each cell is a living thing. You are a huge condominium of individual living organisms. And in that cell, it looks at two things to decide which fuel it's going to run on. And that is... Did I get a bigger sugar delivery today than I got a fat delivery? And if I got a bigger sugar delivery, then yes, I'm going to run on sugar. I got more sugar. We'll, we'll just send the fat back. We're not going to let it in. Let it, let it go back to the fat cells. Don't save it up for later. We got all this sugar we can run on. If there's more fat than sugar... It will not let the sugar in. And the sugar ends up circulating in the bloodstream where the body will eventually turn it into triglycerides, fats, and store it away. It doesn't go to waste. You just get fatter. And that means, and this is controlled so much by the levels of insulin. That's how the cell knows whether there's a lot of sugar in the blood or not. Yeah, the insulin. So when insulin is, when the insulin receptors on the cell see a lot of insulin, they assume a lot of sugar and they stop burning fat. And it's that simple. But they don't know what's going on in the outside world. They have no idea what you ate. The people in those apartments have no idea what the delivery trucks are unloading down in the basement. All they know is the delivery guy brought sugar or a message saying there's sugar coming, and then they know what to do. So in the cell itself, there is a chemical, a biological process called the Randall cycle. And the Randall cycle takes that signaling and, dis and actually shunts everything to use one pathway of metabolism or the other, and that's how energy is created. And that's where the decisions are made. And the, the way to trigger it and the way to control that, where there's no doubt as to what you're burning, is don't accept the deliveries of sugar. And there'll be no sugar. And the cells will have no choice but to burn fat. And then you'll be a fat burner. And it's that simple. It's that simple. Because the people in those apartments, all trillion of them, only know what the delivery guy brought. And they either adjust their actions accordingly or they die. Or they die. Simple as that. So there's a long, long answer to a very short question. But I hope explaining it with that analogy makes makes it a little simpler to understand without having to go through and get a PhD in biochemistry. And that's the best I can do to answer that question. But it's such a simple thing. It's a simple thing. Your body burns whichever fuel's available. And the only thing you need to do is just don't give it the fuel. You don't want it to burn and everything will work fine. So it all boils down to the fact that this is the simplest thing to fix, and it doesn't matter if you really understand why or not. You can't help but succeed if you stop eating the carbs.